They bought this house because they wanted to live on a lake and how much better of a view can you get than that? That's Glen Ellen Lake over there. But they have this walkout basement with a great stone staircase coming down. We're gonna build our waterfall, if you can guess, right in that area there. We're gonna put a reservoir right there in that area, which will give us a closer proximity to where our waterfalls start. We're gonna move our waterfalls back a little bit and then have a bridge kind of in that grassy space over there. The bridge is 100% necessary because it's the only only way the lawn mowers can move along the side of the house and get in to mow this section of the lawn. The other thing we're going to do, you can see where somebody started a waterfall. Let's go down there and take a look. that'll help. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's gonna help or not. This is kind of a typical situation for us, but maybe not that typical. Maybe 50% of the time we're dealing with logistical problems just getting in the backyard. We are in Glen Ellen, Illinois. Glen Ellen is a beautiful town, kind of hilly, which means we get to do some pretty cool stuff with waterfalls. But because of the hills and the density of the area, logistically getting in and out of here is pretty tough. This is their driveway, gorgeous. But we also have several other contractors working here at the same time remodeling and gutting a bunch of the stuff inside the house. I got here, there's a dumpster, which was gonna be our access back in there. Now, we got the okay from the homeowner to clear all of this. So Daniel cutting down one limb helps. So we're almost ready for that, but we're gonna come through here. Well, I'm not walking that way. We're getting this dumpster moved, which then means I have to move all of those cars, which is a thing in itself. Then we're gonna come through. We have all of this room we can come in. I can come underneath this guy here. It looks like a linden of sorts. Come in through here, plow all of this down so we can get into the backyard. This is where we're really gonna stage a lot of our pallets and then still have room for our machine to get in. Then we come into the backyard and I told you it was kind of hilly. If we come up here, maybe you'll appreciate it that much more. Yep. They bought this house because they wanted to live on a lake and how much better of a view can you get than that? That's Glen Ellen Lake over there. But they have this walkout basement with a great stone staircase coming down. We're gonna build our waterfall, if you can guess, right in that area there. So originally, our waterfall was gonna start here, come all the way down, come across this area, and our pit was gonna go right there, our pondless reservoir was gonna go right there, and we'd have a bridge with some stone steps that led you back out into the yard. And we also talked about adding another waterfall from that side, maybe in the future. Future. Changed everything. Homeowner's gonna put in a fireplace put in over there, tied into this wall and everything. So no longer are we gonna put a reservoir there. We're gonna put a reservoir right there in that area, which will give us a closer proximity to where our waterfalls start. We're gonna move our waterfalls back a little bit and then have a bridge kind of in that grassy space over there. The bridge is 100% necessary because it's the only way the lawn mowers can move along the side of the house and get in to mow this section of the lawn. The other thing we're going to do, you can see where somebody started a waterfall. Let's go down there and take a look. Here we go. So that gives you more of a, the elevation that the homeowner sits at over in here. There's that stone staircase. Our reservoir is going to be there. Waterfalls in there. Now you really appreciate how tall that is coming down and through here. So they're going to get a really big waterfall. The one thing we want to focus on is making sure that the sound of it isn't anything like the sound of this one. If I can fire this up, I will for you just so you guys can see what it was like. But they want to abandon this and get rid of it. And, and it was, it's not the worst, right? Like I've seen considerably worse but this thing's settling hard to the right it leaks really really bad I think this wall was existing and the waterfall was a later thought and there's not a rubber liner back behind everything so it leaks as water drips this way and that way and all over the place the other thing the homeowner really doesn't care for is the sound of it and you can imagine what a six foot sheet of water sounds like coming down and just hitting rock and gravel and how much splash there is left right out now it's been a 
abandoned and hasn't run for over a year because they've been fixing stuff inside. But we're gonna try to take a lot of this apart, leaving more of the bigger rock in there. And then if I take a lot of these little sedums, I can tuck these things back in areas and hopefully over time, the plants just kind of engulf this whole thing. If I can get rid of that stone lip that really says I'm a waterfall, it should just look like a big rock wall over in there. And then I think the best thing to do would be put a tree right in here, maybe more of a clumping tree that hides a lot of that. And then that focuses, kind of frames out the staircase and the waterfall that'll go over in here. So lots of logistical issues, getting things cleared out and ready for our stone delivery. The other option was to come in <laughs> off of this street, but coming up that hill just can't happen. Super dangerous. It would take forever for us to move our stone one by one by one up this hill and into the backyard. So it'll take us less time to clear that out and we'll get going. The start of a new project is always a ton of fun and this one's got its challenges, which is why we love doing it. So hop along for the ride. We'll take you through step by step on how we're gonna do this. Gonna be awesome, promise. And let's see if we can't focus a lot on the techniques of building a waterfall in this video. All right guys, see you soon. <laughs> One part. <laughs> Step two. Eventually, we'll get into the backyard. Huh, Corey? I'm <laughs> I said I'd fire this thing up for you. Let's just take a look at what this looks like. So it's got our system. You got a snorkel in there. Who knows if there's aqua blocks and that kind of stuff. We'll start investigating a little bit. All right, here it comes. You can see the leaves and the garbage coming up. have to be honest my initial reaction is again not the worst but look at the splash even if I move this rock and the stink is horrendous so it comes and you can see that splash is like all the way out to here which means it's leaking it looks like they've actually got it pretty confined but uninteresting, right? And to each their own, right? A lot of people just like that big sheet. We're gonna try to take advantage of this big slope and get them, you know, four or five or even up to six different waterfalls dropping down, even getting it a little bit more interactive close to these steps if we can. Not bad, but also facing the wrong way. Hard to see from inside the house. Really hard to see from up there. There you have it. You can also see where it's 100% leaking. If you can see how this is dripping in here, and if there's not a rubber liner in there, if that thing's pitched slightly backwards, you're gonna start losing water in there. And you've got like drip coming off of this, and so this hits this and runs backwards. And so it's gonna be leaking there. The only place I see a rubber liner is right there. So they did a rubber liner over the top, hoping to get this sheet of water out far enough that they wouldn't get any leaking in there. I don't know, we'll get this all taken care of and, and we'll go from there. What are we working on? As you can see, we have the hole excavated. Right now, we have these super sets of sand that we're gonna be using to level off the bottom of the basin. And pretty much all this is gonna do, it is gonna provide a cushion between our aqua blocks, our liner, and our underlayment, between any rocks or any sharp objects that might be in the bottom of our basin that might cause a leak, possible leak, later on. Yeah, we definitely wanna prevent that. So one of the, I think, curses of the season is about every job we've run into a chunk of concrete or a septic tank yep. or an old foundation of some sorts. And yet again, 
found another one. We found another one. Right down there in the corner where Jack's at, there's an old patio slab or something. But we lucked out, we're actually gonna just miss it, aren't we? Yeah, we luckily we over excavated our uh, hole on the side by a few inches and we're gonna be off by probably six inches from the threads where Aqua blocks that piece of cement. All right, well we're gonna put the sand in, get our underlayment, our liner in, and get rolling on this build. Yep. Corey and Luis are over here taking apart the old fountain feature. So they're in the process of rebuilding the outcropping wall. So we're kind of dividing and conquering. So stay tuned. We got the underlayment, the liner, the 20 by 20 liner. Yeah. Which is a square, correct? Yes. <laughs> we had a little inside joke. We were joking about how to orientate our 20 by 20 liner. We had a good laugh. But anyway, we got our underlayment back in on top of that. Jack and you already- you always wanna make sure you get the waterproof side up. Waterproof side up. Mm -hmm. See, we're teaching you guys stuff here. Yes. No, all kidding aside, we got the uh, pondless vault and extension in. Jack's putting in the aqua blocks. Yep. Luis and Corey are buttoning up the flagstone outcropping wall over here. And let me touch on, so the reason why Dan made that comment earlier about opening up the, the square 20 by 20 piece of liner is that when we're in these basins, when we get into those bigger size basins, you're working with a decent sized liner and I mean, they get heavy quick. So it's always nice to know which way you're gonna wanna open up that liner. So you have to do the least amount of work as possible when working with this liner, especially on such a hot day. That liner, it, it cooks you. Well, it comes from our warehouse, rolled up or folded up. So we lay it out in the yard, refold it to where we have it orientated the way we want to put it in. So like Jack said, it's just simpler and easier. So I'm giving you an update on our first day here. Jack and Dan got the whole reservoir done, like I would say 95% by themselves. While Luis and I got rid of the, their old waterfall, basically filled their bowfalls with dirt, put other rocks behind there, and made it look as much as we could like this other wall. So that's out of the picture now, and so now he's gonna have a new and improved pondless waterfall. So the first day went pretty smooth. <laughs> 